a lot of different rooms, same typical backdrop. Hi family, welcome back and thank you for being here. On today's Freedom Friday, I wanna to talk to you guys about money and what it means to me. Because I grew up thinking that money was hard to come by and wherever you were on the financial ladder was sort of where you stayed and that it was really hard to get money and that things were expensive. And I didn't like that growing up because a lot of the excuses that were made as to why the situation was so unhealthy and crappy in my life was because we simply couldn't afford to get out of it. And that was something that I was determined to not ever let happen in my life when I became an adult. So just to begin with, I believe that money is just a game. It's kind of a fake game, but it makes a big difference at the very beginning. And then after you get your basic needs met, everything else is just sort of fun and really doesn't matter at the end of the day. So I really believe that money amplifies what you currently have. So you're, if you're in a state of lack or you have issues with spending and gambling or drugs, money's gonna amplify that. If you have a good heart, you can be happy without money and you like to contribute and you like to grow and be smart, money's gonna amplify that. And it's why a lot of lottery winners go dead or broke in the first five to six years after winning the lottery because it just amplifies what they already have. So if you are in the position that you believe money is going to solve your problem, problems, I believe that that's not necessarily true. I think you have to know how to solve your problems first and then the money comes. And what I have found that is true in my life is that when I continue to get a certain amount of money, there's like a threshold, like a bottom and a top. So you won't let yourself get so broke that you are living on the street per se, or that you're um, owing lots of people and now people are coming with a, a bounty on your head, or you may not get as rich as X amount of debt on your credit cards, or you never seem to be able to save. Those certain thresholds, or what I like to call them like mental thermostats, is something that we are sort of programmed with, whether it's growing up or whether something happened traumatically, like you tried to start a business and you failed, so you feel like you can never make that kind of money or you feel stuck at your job. And the thermostats can change. So for example, when I grew up, my family was always in debt and I always had a debt from the time that I could work at 15 years old. I was always late on my phone bill. I was always having credit card debt. Even in college, the first thing I did was go through, max out my like college credit card, $300 in debt. And when I came out of college, I not only had college debt that I had to pay, I also had 15 grand of credit card debt. And I realized that I needed to change my perspective about how I think and feel about money. And what I realized, this good, kind of goes hand in hand with the minimalism. Like I think the consumerism is what really uh, was troublesome in my life. Like I grew up feeling like I couldn't have what it is that I wanted. Even those things weren't necessarily materialistic. I felt like I couldn't participate in uh, the top dance team because I couldn't, we couldn't afford it as a family. I felt like I couldn't leave my home and be in a better situation with my family because we couldn't afford it. And so I, I sort of nurse that thought or like ease that thought by buying for myself and making me feel like, well, I can have whatever I want. I make my own money now. I can make my own decisions. And ultimately this is going to make me happy when in essence it doesn't. And we don't, we're not going to go into the materialism. You guys know that things and items don't make you happy, even though sometimes we subconsciously believe they will. But at the end of the day, I was using money to sort of satisfy or satiate or pacify something that wasn't being fixed internally. And so I knew something had to change and I knew that my perspective had to be different. So I set a large goal for myself and that large goal was to make about two or three times more than I was making at that time, minimum wage. And I wanted to do this part time. And once I accomplished that, I ended up doubling it. And I wanted to make double that and do that part time. And we can go into more of this on Freedom Fridays, but ultimately, what I ran into was at my job, I reached a cap or a limit. There's only so much that you can make when somebody's paying you. And what I worked so hard at was being the best that I could be in any of the positions that I took. And I realized that I got to work up. I got paid the most. I ended up getting promoted sooner. I ended up becoming the favorite in every job that I have. And so working really hard and trying to do the best that you can definitely works, but there was still no way I was getting to the goal that I had set for myself. So I ended up getting two jobs. And on top of that, I was spending all this income. And so of course, at the end of the day, when I did this for a year and a half, I looked back and I was able to say, 
this didn't really change my situation. I am still in debt, the same amount of debt that I have. I have a lot more stuff and I'm making a lot of money, but I don't have time. I'm stressing out. I'm working so much. This is not the lifestyle that I thought I wanted to live. So I started to think. And one of the things that I notice a lot of people tell me is that they're stuck. They're stuck because of their jobs. And that is a really hard thing for me to hear because I really know what that feels like and I really don't think it has to be true. And all I think it takes is a simple reframing and just kind of thinking creatively outside of the box. If you think about it, a job is not the only thing that you need to have or can or should have in order to make money. You can do other things. For example, if you're great at arts and crafts, we have so many things that you can leverage now like Etsy, eBay, and Amazon where you could go ahead and start selling your own stuff. Even if it doesn't replace your own job, you could potentially make a higher amount of money if you can leverage that idea into being your own boss. Next thing that I learned was if you specialize or if you get a certain level of education in which you can add more value to people. For me at first, this was personal training. I loved personal training so much that I went and got the education for myself, but I ended up realizing that I can make more as a personal trainer teaching something that I was super passionate about while helping other people rather than sitting at my job and I kind of did both to begin with so realize that it's really easy right now to wish that you could quit right now and go do something different but sometimes you have to go and actually try it out and learn and if there's any tips that I can give you is that realize that once you get into that arena of learning how to leverage and make money you start to realize that money kind of does grow on trees you start to plant your own money garden so to speak or skill set in your mind that allows you to be able to understand ways and how to make a certain amount. So for me, my bottom line of my threshold has raised up. I no longer have to feel like I have to work a minimum wage job or close to minimum wage And I no longer have to feel that I have to carry that $15,000 of credit card debt everywhere I go. I know now confidently how to make a certain baseline to make sure my needs are met. And so the idea is to constantly grow in that, to constantly question. You might get to a place where you're like, hey, all my needs are met, this is really great, but understand the market fluctuates. You wanna make sure you have a retirement. If you have kids, all of a sudden your expenses grow, your responsibilities grow, like insurance, healthcare, schooling, and food and clothes and all of that education. So you realize that you have to kind of grow financially with your life if you don't want to get caught on the back burner, if you don't want to get caught in a kind of in a hole that you don't realize you're digging. So these sort of things take thinking and questioning, how can I do things differently or how can I do things more efficiently? And I have to be honest with you, when I first started personal training, we did this on a contract system that was automatic credit. So you guys know when you sign up for a service or a subscription base, they kind of automatically charge your card. And I had all these clients and the first month all the charges came in and just went straight to my bank account and making two to three times more than I was making. And I just kind of felt like, is this right? You know, like it doesn't feel right. It feels weird at first and it kind of feels like monopoly money, you know, like you just pass go and collect your $200. And so it is a really cool thing to step out of and realize that you can leverage your work now for later, whether you're investing on starting up your own company, making pottery, or whether you're investing on your education to become a specialized trainer. And I guess I would say that the last tip that I have for you is no matter what route you go, try to be the best that you can be and try to ask yourself how you can improve whatever market it is you go into. You have to feel passionate about what it is that you're doing because that's what's gonna drive you and fuel the energy that you have in order to create Create something that's actually noteworthy and I will say it doesn't take much it just takes that want to constantly grow and to innovate and to be creative and to be okay with making mistakes I have made so many mistakes and what I realize is every time I come back it is so much easier to do it over again and to sort of start over again. So realize it is literally like playing a game. You are gonna lose some, you're gonna win some. You only need a couple wins to really feel like you can level up and know what you're doing and to just continue to push and pursue. And as long as you know how to be happy without money, as long as you have all your stuff intrinsically together, you have your family, you are grateful, you are focused on your health and your well-being. at the end of the day, as long as your basic needs are covered, the rest of the money is just the icing on the cake. So I hope that a lot of these thoughts have 
helped you guys sort of think if I know like there's so many different avenues that we can go into and talk about like in full length. So any of the things that we've talked about today, if you're interested, stick them in the comments below. I promise you guys a Freedom Friday. So here it is. I'm sorry. I'm still we're everywhere. We're not settled yet. So I thank you guys so much for the well wishes of our travels. We've been traveling really safely. I'm so happy to kind of just be at a neutral place right now, but we are looking to buy a car and hopefully just find a temporary place to stay. So anyways, I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. I won't have a vlog this week, so I will see you on Monday for Monday minimalism. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. Remember, be good, be great and be grateful. I am so thankful for you. Have yourself a great weekend. Ciao.